And today we're going to start with what is probably the first thing you think of when you start thinking about electricity and electric circuits. Think about the power coming out of the wall or a battery. So that's where we're going to start, because this is something that's not really in your prep. <clears throat> okay? So let's get started thinking this stuff through. One of the important things we're going to need today is what is the electron volt as a unit? So this is going to be an important thing of what is the electron volt as a unit for one electron going through a potential inner difference of one volt. To go through the math real quick, again, we're starting with the definition of potential. If I put a charge in a potential, I get a potential energy. Delta V is a volt. Q, I'm just doing magnitude, so I'm dropping the signs all over the place. Q is 1.602, 10 to the minus 19 coulombs, which gives me 1.602 times 10 to the minus 19 joules, or one electron volt. And in fact, this is what an electron volt is. I mean, it's even right there in the name of the unit. An electron volt is a unit of energy that is one electron through one volt. That's exactly what an electron volt is. It's a potential energy gained by a single electron going over a volt. So I think I've mentioned this number before, that the energy you need to ionize hydrogen gas is 13.6 electron volts. You have to give that electron 13.6 electron volts to rip it away from its nucleus. Based upon this, you can say that the potential difference, not the potential energy, the potential difference between the ground state of the electron and very far away is 13.6 volts. Okay, so keeping this distinction between electron volts as energy and volts as potential is going to be really, really important for the rest of today. So that's going to be important in our discussion to answer this question. What is this thing? That's our question for today, is what is this thing? And essentially, it's two pieces of metal in contact. It's two pieces of metal in contact. So I was up kind of late last night reviewing all of my redox and electrochemistry. So if I screw up, someone yell at me. It's been a while, 2002, since I've taken chemistry. So I'm a little rusty. So. If you think back to unit one, if you think back to unit one, we talked about this photoelectric effect. And essentially, we were explaining, talking about how much energy you need to remove electrons from a metal. That was the work function, was how much energy do I need to remove an electron from the surface of a metal? That was called its work function. And we, we connected this with photons and other things. But the key thing you need right now is that there's this material dependent number that essentially tells you how much energy you need to rip an electron off the surface. And it's called that work function. OK? So that's going to be important. So here's our gold. Here's our first battery we're going to talk about. We're going to put, take gold and platinum and touch them together. Simplest battery I can probably think of. So gold has a work function of about 5 EV, and platinum has a work function of about 6 and a third EV. Okay? So this means that an electron in the surface of the gold has a potential energy of negative 5.1 EV. Right, because the Q of an electron is negative. So the potential energy, when I take this positive, I got a negative potential energy. A potential energy of electron in platinum is minus, minus 6.35 EV. Now let's touch them together. Now let's touch them together. What's going to happen when we touch these two things together? Well, the electron in the gold is going to slide down because now that's a lower energy state. In gold, it has a potential energy of minus 
In platinum, it has a potential energy of minus 6.35. It can lower its potential energy by one and a quarter electron volts by sliding down. And so that's what it will do. That's what it will do. If you have like actual metal fillings or anything else metal in your mouth, I actually tried this myself last night because I got a little metal thing in my mouth right now. Go chew on a piece of aluminum foil. It, it's fine, it won't kill you. Do it once, it won't kill you. You'll feel it. You'll feel the electrons jumping from the metal in your mouth to the aluminum foil and back and forth. Don't do it, apparently don't do it repeatedly. Once I'm sure it won't kill you. But you'll be able to feel it. It's, it's, I'll admit, not comfortable, but when you know, think about what's going on, it's kind of cool. Anyway, so <clears throat> the electron will slide over, losing a little energy in the process. And that's a little spark you'll feel when you do that. So the energy sliding, the electron sliding over, it's losing one and a quarter EV. I have a potential difference between the two of one and a quarter volts, right? If the potential energy difference is 1.25 EV, then the potential difference is one and a quarter volts. The potential difference is one and a quarter volts. So I have a potential difference and electrons spontaneously moving from two metals in contact. What's a battery? A potential difference that if I connect the two metals across the terminals, the electrons spontaneously move. So this is essentially the simplest battery I can think of. Now this isn't a very good battery. This isn't a very good battery because the electrons from the goal are going to kind of run across, right? They're going to they're going to fall. Which means I'm going to end up with a negatively charged piece of platinum and a positively charged piece of gold. And eventually, this repulsion is going to stop the flow. Right? You're starting to build up a negatively charged thing. Electrons aren't going to flow anymore. So that's what makes this kind of a crummy battery. The electrons flow once, and then they stop pretty quickly. You get kind of a spark. You don't get a constant flow. But the potential difference between the two metals stays. You, you keep that potential difference, the electrons just stop flowing because the repulsion. Questions on this one? All right, so that's the simplest thing I can come up with. Now, let's make a battery that's a little bit more useful. So the battery we just showed, the gold and platinum in contact, well, that's not particularly helpful because the electrons flow once and then you're done. We want the battery to keep running. So we're actually going to repeat a famous experiment by a guy named Volta. By a guy named Volta. Yes, and this is where the volt comes from. So in Volta's day, in Volta's day, early 1800s, if I'm remembering my scientific history correctly, there were only two sources of electricity that were thought to exist. Lightning and living things. That was it. Those were the only two sources of electricity. And Volta said, hey, I think you don't need a living thing to make electricity. I'm thinking I can do it with metal. And so his setup, which we have here, is we have a piece of copper and a piece of zinc. Copper and zinc, oh boy, and they're not touching each other. So you can see they're not actually touching each other yet. So they're not touching each other at the moment, and we have no potential difference between them. So then we go along 
and we'll bring them into contact. Bring them into contact. Gloves, goggles. Because here we've got one and a half moles per liter sulfuric acid. So we've got one and a half mole per liter sulfuric acid. We'll go and add this in here. Until the two contacts are touching. So now there's enough in there to bring the two metals into contact through the sulfuric acid. And you can see that we are getting just over about half a volt. You got to read the top numbers for this, for the way this is set up. So now we're getting just over half of a volt potential difference between these two pieces of metal, because now we've brought them into contact using the sulfuric acid. And this is the first battery. Volta's first battery is essentially this. <clears throat> so in a bigger picture that maybe helps things see, and you can see this potential difference is just sitting there. These electrons keep flowing. So these electrons keep going. And here's a bigger picture of the setup. In sulfuric acid, the potential of an electron in zinc is 3.68 volts. The, the, the fact that there's sulfuric acid changes these work function numbers, which you might expect all the ions in the sulfuric acid and whatnot. The potential of electrons in the copper is this number. You'll need to memorize these numbers. That's not important. I'm giving, you, giving them to you. These are, you know, look them up. But here's the question. Good. So the charge of an electron is negative. So zinc has, an electron in zinc has a potential energy of negative 3.68 EV. An electron in the copper has a potential energy of minus 4.78 EV. This number is bigger. This number is bigger. And so electrons will flow to the lower energy state, which is towards the copper. This is going back to the Wednesday before the exam, where we talked about the fact that electrons go from low potential to high potential. Electrons go against the potential. You can hear a couple of people making up a rule in their head. Be careful. Here we're talking about electrons moving. And usually, when you're dealing with electronics, that's what's going on, but not always. In a cell, for example, you can and often do have positive charges moving. Potassium ions, sodium ions, calcium ions. So those charges would move from high potential to low potential because they're positive. Electrons go low to high. So you got to think about what's actually doing the moving. All right, so now, Let's go through and actually talk through how this thing keeps running. So the gold platinum, when I put them in contact, the electrons run across and they stop because of the buildup of charge. So in the gold platinum, they run across, they stop because you get a buildup of charge, the repulsion stops the thing from going. Why does this keep going? Why does this keep going? Well, zinc dissolves in sulfuric acid and you spit off zinc 2 plus. You spit off a zinc 2 plus ion, which will eventually precipitate out as zinc sulfate. What does that leave behind in the metal? Two electrons. Right, now I've, that zinc 2 plus popped off, now I've got two electrons. 
Now my zinc has a slight negative charge to it. I have two free electrons and my zinc has a slight negative charge to it. Well, we just said that copper's the lower energy state, right? The electrons would prefer to be in copper because it's a lower energy state. So, over they go. Over they go. And they run through the wire because it's less resistance to run through the wire than to run through the solution. So, they go through the wire. Now, if this was it, we'd have the same problem that we did with our platinum gold. We'd eventually build up charges on this side and the whole thing would stop. But the solution comes in again. The solution has these positive, because it's sulfuric acid, there's these positive hydrogen ions sitting in there. And these electrons are attracted to these positive hydrogen ions and jump off. Which then form a nice diatomic hydrogen, which bubbles out. And now we're back where we started. We have neutral zinc, neutral copper, and the whole thing can just keep going. One sec. The whole thing can just keep going. And so we can continue moving these electrons across and the reaction doesn't stop because we come back to a neutral state each time and we maintain a fixed potential difference. This is a, notice, this is bold, italics, and underlined. This is probably the number one thing that people miss in this unit right here. Batteries have a fixed potential difference between the terminals. They don't have a fixed current, they don't have a fixed power output, they have a fixed potential difference. This is the number one thing people miss in this unit right here. Okay? So this will go forever. Well, until the zinc dissolves completely, and then it'll stop. And this is the lead, the battery in your car is exactly this. I mean, instead of zinc and copper, they use lead and lead oxide. But they use lead, lead oxide, buried in sulfuric acid. This is your car battery. This is your car battery right here. And if you come up here, you can come up after class and look if you want. You can actually see little bubbles forming around both electron, electrodes as the hydrogen comes off one side and... Actually, oxygen and water vapor come off the other side. Yeah? What stops the hydrogen ions from So, good question. Why do, the, why do the electrons run around to the copper and then to the hydrogen instead of just jumping straight in? Okay, we're getting into some fun with electrochemistry, so if I say something stupid and screwed up, stop me. Um, essentially, the energy drop going around is bigger, so they go to the copper first, and then you build up enough that they start popping off the copper. So here's your big takeaway. The battery has a fixed potential difference between its terminals. They do not maintain constant current. They do not maintain constant power output. Fixed potential difference. Fixed potential difference. In the past, when I've taught this course, the question on this topic has been the most missed question on the exam. Please change my history on this. <laughs>